Greetings and welcome to church at the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs. We hope you're off to a great start this year. And on this second Sunday of 2022, it's all about the water. One of the ways Christians all over the world um, get started in a new year is by renewing their baptismal covenant with God. Um, Pastor Jane's going to tell us all about that in a little while. But baptism is a ritual that officially brings us into Christian community. And whether or not you were baptized as a baby or as a young person or last week, um, the fact is, is that baptism is important for you. It's a part of your identity. And we're going to be looking at why Jesus was baptized today. Um, at the end of our service, Jane will be leading us in a, um, a ritual that's called a renewal of baptism. If you'd like to take part, I hope you will, um, please bring a small bowl of water to this worship area and then make yourself at home. What we, we invite you to welcome one another to worship today if you're watching live um, and share this answer to our icebreaker question. Besides baptism, what is your favorite thing to do in the water. Hello, Pastor Jane here on this Baptism of Christ Sunday. I decided I'd celebrate the gift of baptism that we're going to be talking about today with my very baptismy caftan. And I'm so glad you're here. It's going to be a very special day to worship and be together. And I do hope you have the little bowl of water to renew your baptism, which we'll be doing in a little bit of time. But first, let's start our time of worship by inviting God's presence especially into our midst as we breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in, God's presence. Breathing out, our stuff. Breathing in, God's love and peace and light. And breathing out our fears, our frustrations, whatever is not of God, as we breathe in and we breathe out, may we truly experience God's presence in us. And as we widen our awareness, may we sense God all around us, God wrapping God's arms around us like a wonderful embrace, filling this space wherever you may be, and connecting us with all who are worshiping with us now and all there is. Oh, great and gracious God, we're so grateful for your presence that is indeed with us always. And now in an especially profound way that Jesus has been born once more into our world and into our hearts. And may this time of worship and learning and celebrating and remembering be a joyful, growing time and may it give us cause to continue and ever more greatly give you all the thanks and all the praise for this gift you have given us called life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now Paul is going to share with us our scripture for today, the scripture from the Gospel of Matthew that tells us Matthew's version of Jesus' baptism. Matthew 
From Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, I read, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. A fish in water. That's what we want to focus on today. Now, perhaps you're familiar with the phrase, a fish out of water. That idea, that concept, makes for really great storytelling. Some of our greatest novels, movies, TV shows are all about some character that is taken out of their normal, usual environment and placed someplace completely foreign, and they have to learn how to deal with life in this foreign environment. Think about a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, or Crocodile Dundee, being there, the Munsters, the list is endless. But that's not what we're going to think about today. Even though those are great stories and we love watching them because they bring us a fresh perspective on our culture and, uh, and it's usually very entertaining and usually quite funny. But today, fish in water. We are going to be looking at what it means to be a creature that needs water like fish who need water in order to survive. Fish just can't live without water. They absolutely can't. And let's face it, in Jesus' eyes, we are fish. We need to be in water, just like fish do. Fish, the fish was a very uh, important symbol of who we are in the ancient world, for starters. You probably are familiar with that symbol of the fish that you see around town and on cars and this and that today. That symbol was uh, the way in the ancient world Christians would, uh, would share with one another, would uh, telegraph to one another that they were Christians in a time when Christianity was illegal in the Roman Empire. And as you may or may not know, the Greek word for fish ichthus becomes an anagram or an acrostic describing who Jesus is. The letters are I, X, theta, Y, and S. Or in Greek, iota, chi, theta, epsilon, and sigma. And if you're a, in the Greek system, you know some of those letters. But as an acrostic, it tells us the I, is the first letter for Jesus or Jesus. The X or the Chi is the first letter for the word Christos, which means Christ. Theta is the first letter for Theo, which means God. Epsilon is the first letter for Hidos or Son. And Sigma is the first letter of the word Soter, which means Savior. So you have, with the word fish, a very theologically important statement of who Jesus is. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. So it's a very clever and really important symbol. But it's not just that. Jesus called humankind fish. We're called to be fishers of men. People are fish. And it's not just some random idea or even because a lot of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. Let's face it, God created humankind to be very fish-like in a lot of ways. For example, fish commonly, a lot of fish, travel in schools 
they travel in a group. And it's amazing to watch fish traveling in groups. If you've ever seen it, they all dart through the water like this and then they can turn on a dime and they all kind of know how to do it at once. How does that work? It's not unlike a really successful congregation who knows that they need to work together and they need to share common core values that determine their decisions. And when a congregation is operating like that, they can turn and they can move ahead all in one body. Secondly, we know that, uh, that to understand who God is, we can't do that on our own. We need a school, a group of other people to help us understand who is this presence that we can't see, smell, taste, touch, sense is real, sense is here. We need others' observations. We need others' experiences. We need the ability to be able to share what we think, to start putting the pieces of this mystery together. That's why being part of a church means it's really important to participate in classes and small groups and retreats where we can really think about these things and talk about them. Why it's really important when we're serving together to talk about what we're feeling and what we're experiencing. It all helps us understand what this mystery of God is all about, which is ultimately the reason that we come together and are a church. Also, it's important for us, I think Jesus said it was important for us to think about ourselves as fish because he thought of himself as a fish, believe it or not. It's kind of the centerpiece of the scripture reading today where Jesus comes to be baptized and uh, baptism would probably have been kind of a weird thing for Jesus to want from John the Baptist. The baptisms that John was offering were baptisms that were uh, very commonplace in the ancient world um, along a bunch of different faith traditions. It was all about purifying yourself from sin. But Jesus says, no, I'm getting baptized so that all righteousness can be fulfilled, which ultimately, when you look at it, is what purification from sin is all about, but that's for another sermon. Righteousness is another word for right relationship. And Jesus came to earth to create and make available right relationship with God and right relationship with humankind. And Jesus said, I need to be received in water for me to be able to do that. Water is so important, baseline, for what Jesus is about. And why is that? Because water in the spiritual realm is God. Or to put it another way, Jesus experienced God like a fish experiences water. When you think about what water is for a fish, water is everything. Water is where the fish gets their air. Water is where the fish gets their food. Water is the, the means by which a fish travels, travels all over the place. And that's what the way Jesus experienced God. As I've shared before, at the time that Jesus came to earth, the idea was that God lived in some distant place, was very, very far away from humankind. God was angry at how sinful humankind was. God wasn't going to come and, and help humanity out until they got their act together. And Jesus said, no, God is right here. God is everywhere. And the thing that we need more than anything else is this presence of love and grace that is here for the taking, that is here for the breathing in. If only we will let ourselves do that. So it's one of the first things that Jesus does in his ministry. He makes so public that the faith journey is first and foremostly being dependent on water and what water symbolizes in our spiritual life. The, the complete, constant presence of God. A loving, peaceful, gracious God. And today, that's what we're invited to do. 
if we've already been baptized, if we've already, if our parents came to us and or brought us before a, a, the, a congregation and a pastor in, in a, when we were young, when we were babies, and uh, immersed us in that water or sprinkled water on us as a symbol that we are received and immersed in God's water, or if we got perhaps baptized at a later time in our lives, uh, that baptism always holds. But we're invited today to renew that baptism, to reclaim it, to remind ourselves how important it is to be fish in water, and to remember that that's what we are. If you're not baptized today, I invite you to let me know as soon as possible. I'd be happy to talk to you. If you're feeling like you would like to be baptized, we can do that, even if we want to do it online. And it's really important, I think, today for us to really remember that, that we don't want to take for granted this notion that we are fish in water, that we know that we need this water, and we know that this water is everywhere, that we're really conscious of it. And as we become conscious of it, we are able to truly take advantage of all that that water brings. There's that old story about the two young fish that are moving past, moving through the water, and some old fish says to the young fish, hey, how's that water? And the fish swim a little bit further, and they stop, and they say to each other, what the heck is water? It's so easy for us to just take advantage of, to take for granted the idea that God is everywhere, or to forget that God is everywhere. Today we want to say, no, we know that it's true God is everywhere, and we want to be aware. That's part of what I want us to do today as we renew our baptism. The other thing that I want us to do is to become really conscious about the fact that we are renewing our baptism today in early January 2022. That we are renewing our baptism, we are reclaiming our baptismal vows to follow Jesus because we get to be fish in water. We're doing that with a phrase that I like to say, that is used in the Bible oftentimes, for such a time as this. We're getting our baptism renewed for such a time as this. This is going to be the through line of my sermon series for the next several weeks. Whatever we're doing, it's for such a time as this. I sort of misspoke. That phrase is not used throughout the Bible, but you'll see it now used throughout Christian culture, biblical culture. That phrase comes to us from the book of Esther and the story of Esther, the story of this beautiful young Jewish woman who, is, uh, who marries uh, the king of Persia. The king of Persia takes a liking to her because she's so beautiful. Uh, all, as well as, uh, she, and she's Jewish, as I said, and all her people are there in Persia, and they are being persecuted. And they're always on the verge of being exterminated because the Jewish people were not liked very well by the Persians. And there's a certain point in the story, a climactic moment in the story, where the king of Persia is very upset at the Jewish people and wants to annihilate them. And Esther's uncle comes to her and says, you're the queen. You should tell the king of Persia who you are and that he can't do that. And she's like, I, I don't think I can do that. I'm, I'm afraid to tell him the truth. And he says to her in so many words, perhaps you need to do that. And perhaps God has brought you here for such a time as this, to save your people. The idea being that at this moment, at this place in time, in this situation, you are called to do something important. You're called to do something different. And God has willed this all coming together. God is very present with what is happening. You need not be afraid. But you need to step up and recognize what needs to happen for such a time as this. And I don't know about you, but 2022 seems like a really for such a time as this type year. Things feel like from here on in, they need to be different. 
We have lived through this pandemic for the last couple of years. I think last year was very disappointing because many of us thought, oh, with vaccinations and everything else, it's gonna be smooth sailing getting this pandemic under control. And we've realized that the, that the journey of the pandemic is nowhere near that simple. And it can be really frustrating because we made plans and we have expectations that have been dashed. And rather than just be upset and angry and stressed out, that we continue to live in a world where we can't really make plans, that we have to hold any ideas of getting together really loosely, and we have to be really flexible, super flexible, that this is maybe a gift that we want to embrace. For such a time as this, we are going to love being flexible. We're going to love letting go of what our plan A was and seeing what God has in store for plan B. So as we renew our baptism today, perhaps that's something that we really want to take and envelop and embrace as we say yes as to being a disciple from here on in. We are going to choose as individuals and as a community to be super flexible, which probably we all need to do more of anyway, but especially now. Secondly, another way we can look at the for such a time as this phrase, especially today, is that I think this is an opportunity for all of us to really own the fact that many of us are what we might call in the second half of life. And that is a bit of a different place. And the truth is, the soul that God gave to us has actually different needs in a different, at this different stage of life than it did when we were younger. We may not recognize that, we may not understand that. It's something I don't think that's talked about nearly enough. And the good news is that this second half of life offers up all sorts of interesting and important and wonderful opportunities that we didn't have or maybe we weren't ready for in that first half of life. And that's what this book study that I'm hoping to do in a couple weeks is all about. And I'll have more information about that next week. It's interesting to note, as I did a little study about humankind and their need for water, as we age, we actually take on a different relationship with water. As we age, our, uh, and we need water more. As we age, our ability to understand or know that we're thirsty tends to lessen. And that's one of the reasons that older people have such trouble with dehydration. We need more water, just like we need more God as we move into this second half of life. So for such a time as this, maybe that's a great thing for us to claim. There's all sorts of other ways we can look at for such a time as this. What's going on in our nation that feels unlike ever before? What are we maybe called, rise, called to rise up to and, and be and, and, and speak out on um, as Jesus' disciples, bringing God's kingdom? Or maybe there are things in our own personal life or in our family life that we know need to change. And for such a time as this, we know we need the water to swim in as Jesus fish. So I invite us to think about all that and to let rest in our minds a wonderful quote from Anne Lamott about baptism. Christianity is about water for God's sake. It's about immersion, about falling into something elemental and wet. Most of what we do in worldly life is geared toward our staying dry looking good, not going under. But in baptism, in lakes and rain and rivers and tanks and fonts, you agree to do something that's a little sloppy because at the same time, it's also holy and absurd. It's about surrender, giving into all those things we can't control. It's a willingness to let go of balance and decorum and to get drenched. So are you ready now to say yes to your drenching, to reclaim your drenching, no matter how sloppy and undry 
It may be because water, God, is the one thing that we need more than anything else. And we get to say yes to that one more time for such a time as this, for so many reasons. What else can I say at my end to the sermon, especially on baptism and fish, but fe. <laughs> Let's get our bowls and get ready to renew our baptism. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Water from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the water to renew our commitments to Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, each and every one of you, wherever you may be, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin for such a time as this? Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? Will you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves for such a time as this? Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? Do you continue to confess Jesus Christ as your savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Messiah in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, races, sexual orientations, and gender identities for such a time as this? Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world for such a time as this? Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Do you affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, our creator, in Jesus Christ, the redeemer, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and especially for such a time as this? Now that you have renewed the vows that you made at your baptism or the vows that were made on your behalf, let us give thanksgiving over the water. just like when you were baptized. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Come, Lord Jesus, let us pray. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows your spirit blows where you will. We cannot stop you, God. But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the spirit, or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound, and we forget its powers. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty, O oh God. Come and refresh us. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. 
Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make for us long for your coming reign. Most holy God, Abba Father, glory to you. Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, glory to you. Spirit of fire, spirit over the waters, spirit of holiness, glory to you for such a time as this. Eternal God, one and three and three and one, all, or, all glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And now for all of you who are baptized, who have renewed your vows, feel free to take this water and to feel it in your hands, to play with it, to put the sign of the cross on your hand. Whatever you wish to do, remember your baptism. Remember that you are baptized. And rejoice. Thank you, God, for you are our water, now and always. Amen. As always, there is opportunity to invest in this ministry and to all that our church is about in the Coachella Valley and beyond. Um, when you give, you can give in multiple ways. Um, as you see on the screen, you can give by mailing to the P.O. Box noted there. You can go on your phone and through a text process make a gift. Or you can go to the website and actually set up a recurring gift or make a one-time gift. Um, however you give, we appreciate it, and it help, makes a difference. It does some good, some real good in the world. At this time, Nancy DeMorris is going to join us and tell us a little bit about the annual financial pledge campaign.
Good morning. This message is brought to you by your fund development team. Yes, it's annual pledge card time, the time of year when we ask you to prayerfully consider your gift to the church for the year. Our theme this year is supporting God's party for such a time as this. You will be receiving a letter from Pastor Jane this week reminding us of all the things, important things, that our church does for the community. And not just members of the congregation, but also those who are less fortunate. The goal of the campaign is $320,000. That's what the Finance Committee has determined we will need from pledged income to continue to do the work that we have been called to do. So please read Pastor Jane's letter and return the pledge card promptly. Won't you help support God's party for such a time as this? Well, that's our worship service today, and I hope that it's blessed you as much as it's blessed me. This fish in water is about to swim out into the rest of the world and uh, hope that you will be back here next Sunday, next time you're here to worship, for some more adventures in faith and discipleship for such a time as this. So hear this blessing as we journey out. May the peace of Christ, which is that fullness of knowledge and that fullness of God that Jesus embraced and showed to the world, proved to the world, may that peace be in you and around you and through you and guide you, that peace that is God's presence. And may it help you as you journey, as you swim to those whom you love, towards those whom you have yet to meet, towards those whom you fear. And may you discover it makes all the difference in the world. Bottoms up.